Although uh, the power of technology is well known, we never really think of it in this light. And I think it's interesting to see what transpires from the technology devices that these college students dealt with on a daily basis. Digital forensics can be an even bigger part of a murder investigation, and it might just be the key to solving the murders in Idaho. Police have not yet said whether they've managed to root around inside all the victims' phones, but thanks to this Daily Mail photo that was taken through one of the windows of the murder scene, we do know that the home probably had Wi-Fi. We've also seen several photos of laptops and computers, and now after going through the victim's social media with a fine-tooth comb, we also know that at least one of the victims, Kaylee Gonzalez, had a smartwatch. And in this day and age, it is more than possible that the kids had a virtual assistant in the home, you know, like an Alexa or an Echo. Um, those things somehow listen to you even when you don't want them to. Often what is heard is actually recorded, and there's a file that can exist in the cloud of everything you said, even if you don't know it. And all of these devices, these modern conveniences, are constantly listening and recording everything that's going on in our lives. So what might they reveal about the murders that happened in that house? Or the murderer who went through that house? What could this tell the police? I'm joined by Jake Green. He is the digital forensics technical lead for Invista Forensics. He's assisted over 20 law enforcement agencies with more than 1,300 cases. Jake, you're the perfect person to talk about. I want to just talk first about the Apple Watches. We, we saw one on Kaylee. It is more than probable that the other kids, the victims, might have had one as well. And those things are a trove of information. So tell me the good, the bad, and the ugly about an Apple Watch and when investigators come in. Yeah, absolutely. So not only just the Apple Watch, but when we think of like the Google Watches as well, uh, and Garmin Fitbits and, and those things, uh, the watches themselves can operate without a cell phone or they can be tethered to a cell phone. Uh, so we've got those two different pieces. Those watches can be used for communications, listening to music, viewing photos, uh, and even the health applications that can track heartbeat, uh, resting heart rates, uh, and really show us even a potential of time of death uh, when the heart for stopped Kaylee, being if detected. She, yeah. I mean, that could literally be the exact time of death because those things do record and they often call you. They, like 911 will call you to say, we detect your heartbeat stopped. Are you okay? Do you need us there? Absolutely. Uh, and the other important thing to remember is that if it is tethered to a phone, we may have notifications on that device that tell us when these emergencies happen. Of course, you'd have to be wearing it at that moment. And I know, you know, many people take them off at night to charge them. Not everybody, but but some people do. Okay, the other thing I want to ask you about, and this is a little graphic, but it's important to the facts in the, in the case, and that is that the coroner, you know, has revealed that, you know, something we all know happens, that the victim's hands were all bagged, and that's to preserve evidence under the fingernails, et cetera, for the autopsy. But does that mean that if they had an Apple Watch on, it didn't come off? In my experience from law enforcement, uh, we would have left a watch on regardless of if it's a smart watch or if it's a regular uh, timekeeping watch. Uh, that's something that we're going to want to review, the clothing, the trace evidence that we can find. Uh, those pieces would be reviewed, not in a crime scene, but when we get back to a morgue uh, and actually run through an autopsy. We're going to document the clothing, we're going to document those watches, and then at that point, with proper lighting and we can see exactly what's going on, we may try to transfer that watch uh, to take it to a lab to be able to pull that for the forensic data off of it. Well, that that all sounds very smart to be you know to be a preservationist about it all. But in, I also know that sometimes this stuff is so digitally delicate that if you take a device out from its source of Wi-Fi or its connectivity, some of that stuff can be lost. So I'm just imagining. The, the, the body being taken out of that home and then, you know, the autopsies a few days later, A, the watch lost its connectivity. Did, they, did it lose important data on the way out of the home in the, in the, in the ME's truck? And then B, um, is it possible that the watch would be out of batteries and, and dead in a couple of days and thereby lose data as well? That's exactly right. That's if we don't properly preserve evidence, we can lose everything. Uh, especially with uh, with cell phones. Uh, if that phone is uh, in what's called an after-first unlock state, we have a much higher likelihood of getting into that device uh, than if it is to power itself down because of loss of battery. 
So being timely in our, our efforts to recover evidence, uh, especially in cases that we do have a deceased person, we don't know the possible pin for the phone. Um, in the past, we've used the decedent's fingerprints to uh, unlock a device. So those are all things that could have happened here, uh, even the, the facial unlocks. Thank you for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your television provider 